If you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and grab them. Now, if, again, if you're a guest, here's how we play this around here. I will give you some scriptures you can see on the screen. I'll give you some by reference and some I'll just quote. Different levels. Because I don't want to spoon feed you everything. And never one service can I give you or anybody give you everything. But I don't want to spoon feed you. I want you to be curious or question what I'm saying. To write it down and search it on your own. In fact, one of our common phrases is don't take my word for anything. Challenge everything I say with the word of God. Because at the end of the day, it's not what Pastor Greg says, this is what the Bible says. And so I really believe that as you challenge what I'm saying on Sunday, on Monday during the week, you have an opportunity, more of an opportunity for God to speak to you, to develop you, and to help you grow in your faith. Can I get an amen? Galatians 5, chap Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, it says, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. It is for freedom that Christ has set us us free. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Now stand firm. One translation says stand strong. Another translation says stay in that. Don't walk out of it. Romans 6 tells us that don't use your liberty or your freedom to go back into sin because that brings you back into bondage. John chapter 15, verse 7, 8, and 16 talks about the fruit that is that change from the word of God in your life and that God wants that fruit to remain. What am I telling you? What God does in your life, he not only wants to do through your life, but what he wants to, what he is doing in your life, he wants it to remain. God doesn't want, and I see this in the, in the church world, from, and all of us, we deal with this from different times and different areas, where you receive something, but you don't keep the something you receive. It becomes an experience of, I remember when Jesus made me happy 12 years ago. I remember when I experienced God's joy in 1987. I remember when God blessed me that one time. Woo, that was a good two days. No, what God is doing in you, he wants it to become a part of you. Because you're connecting when you receive, you are connecting as a branch to the vine. And it's not like a branch when connected to the vine and begins to draw that life. It's not like, okay, you drew some life yesterday. You don't get any for the next three weeks. No, he wants that flow to keep going. He wants you to read what you receive to be able to receive it and maintain it so that you can share it. Yeah. It is for freedom that Christ has made us free. We celebrate the freedom as a nation. Which means we have choices, we have rights. We don't have a, a dictatorship in a country that defines the parameter of how far we can go. We have an ability to make a choice against all odds, against all everything against you. You can still make a choice to override the impossible, do the, do the incredible, and blow every theory and every idea out of the water. Some of the... Great things about our country is not only that we're a nation under God, but that we are a land of opportunity. Some people think that it means we're a land of entitlement that you're owed. No, you have an opportunity to make out of your life. I love movies. I enjoy watching movies. It's one of my own uh, hobbies and pastimes. And I love movies that are like based on true stories. Like Rocky. I'm just seeing if you're listening. Do you remember that movie Will Smith did years ago, Pursuit of Happiness? Yeah. I could only watch that one time. That was that was amazing story. That was like emotionally wrecking. And you walked out of that going, OMG. But what a great example. And there's many more in the world of people who had everything against them, which would make most people throw in the towel and just quit. And if he would have, in his story, thrown in the towel and quit, no one would have blamed him. No one would have said, I can't believe you did that. They would all say, I totally understand. But if he would have done that, his story would never have been told. What made his life worthy of a story to be told was it wasn't that it was easy. It was that it, even against obstacles and opposition, he made a choice. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. 
I'm going to keep trying. I'm going to keep growing. I'm going to keep working until I reach my goal and my dream. That's the land of opportunity. You have a choice. But when we take that context even in our walk with God, in the, in the realm of God, when Jesus made us free, he gave us choice, freedom. See, it's amazing how the world, I'll say it this way, religion, and because if you're a guest, I'm not into religion. I'm into a real relationship with Jesus Christ. I know a lot of people who go to church, but they don't know Jesus. They can tell me more about the doctrine of their church or denomination than they can tell me what a, a chapter and verse that they're believing at. Oh, we believe. Where's that in the Bible? Well, it's got to be there somewhere. No, I'm not into that. I'm into freedom. And it's amazing how the devil has sold the idea that when you sell out to Jesus, when you love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, which is the first and great commandment, that all of a sudden God removes your choices. I'm telling you, God gives you choices. Not choices to sin, choices from sin. The Bible says we're called out of darkness into his glorious light. He's called you out of bondage into freedom. Did you hear me? And the truth be told is that sin in prison, sin removes choices. Go look at a meth addict. They don't have many choices anymore because they're so bound by that drug and that demon that drives them that their choice, they live for doing what is being demanded of them by that addiction. Show me somebody who's caught up in any level of addiction, drug addiction, pornography, adultery, lying, whatever it is, and they will find as they go down the road, because the devil doesn't work in feet, he works in inches. And as long as they stay down that wrong road one day, they'll look around and say, how did I get here? Where now the things that I hated, the things I despised, that was just like the prodigal son who found himself feeding the swine, wishing he could eat what they were eating. And if that's not gross enough, you got to keep it in the cultural perspective that Jesus was talking to people who understood that swine, which represents pigs, was unclean. That was something you weren't even supposed to touch. And one day he had gone down so far that he found himself feeding that which thing, feeding that which he used to not even touch. They feed their addiction. They feed the compulsion. They feed it. I, I want to be free. I, I wish I wasn't like this. And they hate themselves because of the addiction. Because what the devil does, he does not play fair. He will entice you with something shiny. And then when he has you, he's the one that condemns you and says, I can't believe you did that. You're a horrible person. Have you noticed sin will diminish your value system? Sin will destroy your self-image. Sin will make you feel worse. And there's people out there, maybe some here today, that you're under addiction and you wish you could be free. You wish you didn't have that. You wish that you could stand up and be free from all this garbage, but you keep finding yourself being drugged back into it. And the devil says you'll never get away. You'll never be free. You'll never be happy. You'll never be whole. Look who you are. Look what you've done. And the devil reminds you of everything you've done in the past. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus said, and it comes from the word of God, that the devil is a liar. He is the father of all lies. And there is no truth in him. For whom the Son is set free is free indeed. Shout, I'm free. Well, I got to work with you a little bit. I can't play with you. This is not to be, let's be pretty. Shout, I'm free. You say, Pastor, I'm not free yet. I didn't say, do you feel free? I didn't say, do you look free? I'm telling you by the truth of God's word, before you know it, before you experience it, freedom has been purchased by the blood of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, whom the Son has set free. And if you can't be willing to say, I'm not working by what I feel or what I see or what I hear, but I'm moved by the truth of the word of God. That's what Romans says. Begin to say, I'm free. I don't know what addiction, what devil, what demon, what torment, what fear, because it could be sin. It, some people are bound by fear, bound by torment. I'm telling you that's less than what God has for you. Did you hear me? You have a greater capacity. You have a greater potential. You have a greater opportunity in Christ. For freedom, he has set you free. For freedom, let's throw that verse back up. For freedom, he has set you free. 
for freedom. Christ has set you free. Say, I'm free. I'm free. Now say it with a smile. Say, I'm free. What are you doing? I'm spitting in the devil's face. Come on, we're going to just mess with him. He should have never messed with it. I don't know why you came today, but I'm here to tell you that the devil is a liar. God is stronger. But pastor, I've tried to get that thing off my back. I know you tried in your own ability. We're going to work on that. We're going to show you some stuff today. Amen. Well, if only, if only, if only. Maybe I just need to be more disciplined. I need more accountability partners. That's what I need. You'll come up with all kinds of stuff in the natural. But let me tell you, you can have 100 accountability partners and lie to every one of them. You're cheating on your wife? Mm -mm, Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. While you're driving and your girlfriend's in your car with you. You can't lie to the Holy Spirit. He knows. See, my job is not to be your Jesus. My job is to connect you to Jesus. Amen. Let's go to our next verse. We're going to talk about this. This comes out of 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. Notice this. I love this verse. You are of God, little children. Read this with me if you would. Say, you are of God. All right, come on. Come on now. Don't mess with me. I'll tell them to cook that food raw and you won't like it. You don't mess with me. To I'll tell them to deflate that slide to half. We'll watch them. Boom. I'm joking. All right, ready? One, two, three. You're. I love this verse. Say, greater is he. That is in me. Let's stay there for a second. Greater is he that is in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So regardless of what is against you, he who is in you is greater. I got to learn to tap into that greater because the greater one's on the inside. If you're born again, if you're a child of God, if you're a Christian, than the greater ones on the inside. Now, I love this because the religious people, let's get real, religious people, we got to move beyond of just a great idea or being religious, I did my religious, religious thing, to where you experience God in such a powerful uh, way that it doesn't mean that you have to throw up or something. We get really weird. No, but you experience God in such a powerful way that you walk out of some stuff today. That you walk out of some stuff today and you never go back anymore. Because when Romans, when Jesus said, whom the Son has set free, whom the Son has set free is free indeed. If you go to the original text of that word indeed, you'll find out it's saying, he, whom the Son has set free. It's, it, it's this context. It's as if you were caught in the trap, God sets you free from the trap and destroys it from ever working against you again. I'm telling you, I'm not just looking for the drug addicts and the, and all the, and the, the, the racists and the pornography. I'm looking for people even the, if there is a little inf devil messing with you, we're coming for every one of them in the name of Jesus. Because there's no such thing as partial freedom. Well, I'll let you go to church as long as you don't. No, 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 there's no partial freedom. Well, pastor, if I was just, if I was just more, if I, I was saved longer, I just got saved, maybe that's the problem. I want you to look at this verse. I like this. Because we focus on greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But if you look at it, notice it says, you are of God's. How many people are of God? That means if you're born again, you have the right. Say, I have the right. Come on, church, say, I have the right. Come on, talk to me loud. Say, I have the right to be free. See, if you don't understand that, you will entertain or embrace what doesn't have a right to be in your life. 
That's what David, when he said to Goliath, he told the king, you know, what is the reward? I'll take this uncircumcised Philistine, which he meant when he said that, the word uncircumcised, besides the, what it represents, it represents a covenant. And he was saying this giant is not part of God's covenant. This problem is not from heaven. This, this pain, this torment, this addiction is not God testing me. The religious world will tell you, God put it on you to test it. I'm telling you, when you understand your covenant, that is not from God. Fear is not of God. But perfect love casts out fear because fear has tor torment. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but a power of love and sound mind. If you don't know who has rights, can you imagine not knowing who had right to walk into your house? People walk in and out. Well, they walked in. They must belong. I learned from my dad, who's now in heaven. He died in 2000, but he had pastored for almost 40 years. Pastored Hope Church for 38. And he used to always say, son, if you walk in and you act like you own the place, most people will leave you alone. And you know what? I found that to be true. You can go places you shouldn't go. If you just walk in, just act like you're, you're supposed to be there. Most people don't want to mess with you. In fact, Jonathan, who we're getting ready to have in a few weeks, was uh, uh, sharing a story. He was, he was driving in, a, in another country, no, excuse me, in another state for a conference. And uh, he just got messed up on traffic and found himself on the side of the road, the curb where they were working on the road. They had sectioned off the street. And he just, for whatever reason, was not paying attention and found himself. And he was right next to where all these workers were at a work zone. And he was thinking, oh, I'm in trouble now. And he just had this thought. He rolled down the window and said, hey, guys, how's it going? Are we going to get this project done on time and on budget? <laughs> and they said, yes, sir. And he said, good. You're doing, keep up the good work. And pulled out. <laughs> no one, it's amazing what you can get by with. It's amazing what we've allowed the devil to get by with because he walks into our life like he belongs there, supposed to be there, and has a right to it. But when you understand the boundaries, you can say, wait a minute, you don't have a right to be here. Wait a minute, that's enough. Say with me, enough, enough. is enough. enough. Well, Pastor, I, I, I don't know if I can do that. I'm just not, that's just not my way. Listen. I've seen sensitive, soft-spoken grandmas. You mess with one of their kids or their grandkids, and you're going to see a side that you didn't know. Come on, right? Don't tell me you can't. Because something on the inside rises up in you, the greater one. And all of a sudden, you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know the doctors give me their report. I know it looks like a bad report, but wait a minute. I don't need to embrace this. I don't need to celebrate this. I need to fight against this because this is not of and from God. I, I, I know that my boss said he's getting ready to lay me off and I'm about to lose. I, I don't have to embrace this. I don't need to celebrate it. I need to stand against this. I need to stand firm in my freedom. I need to stand firm in my freedom. And you will have opposition of tension, opposition of the enemy's forces, opposition of thoughts thrown into your own mind, telling you why you can't or won't or shouldn't or it'll never happen. And it's amazing how the devil can create. You couldn't remember anything from when you were in school, but all of a sudden you can remember all the details of how you failed last time in 1969. You tried, and all of a sudden you just, oh, that was horrible. I never want to experience that again. And the devil starts reminding you and you play out in your imagination the worst case scenario but let me tell you if you're a child of God if you're saved the freedom belongs to you notice here notice he didn't say you are of God children notice this I like you are of God little children you can be little in the kingdom of God you just got saved. You don't know. You don't know the difference between New Testament or Old Testament. You're still trying to figure this thing out. I'm telling you, when you got saved, the Bible says you came out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Freedom belongs to you. Say, freedom belongs to me. How do I get free? 
people can pray for me, that works. But if you listen to me, I'm going to show you a way that also works that allows you to stay free. Because if, if it's just someone, and I'm not against people praying for people. I am not, so don't misunderstand. But if it's just a matter of someone laying hands on you and praying for you, and you don't understand this, the first opportunity to retreat, you'll run back. But I'm praying today that as you begin to obey God, just like we see in the Old Testament, a story. When you begin to obey God, that the steps of your obedience thunders in the ears of your enemy in the name of Jesus. Causing them to panic and run away. And let go of what belongs to you. There's some stuff the devil's been holding that belongs to you. And some of us have been satisfied to say, I guess that he'll keep it. I guess I'll never have it. But in the name of Jesus, I decree every demonic force has been holding stuff back that belongs to you to be broken. The hands be taken off it. And I command it to start flowing into your life this week, this day, in the name of Jesus. You say, Pastor, I don't understand that. You don't have to understand it to get the benefit. I don't understand how my TV works, but I enjoy watching it. I don't know how my car works, but I enjoy driving it. You need to learn to accept the benefits of something as you're learning to discover the principles of it. I call you free in the name of Jesus. I call you free. And according to Isaiah 55, 11, it will not return void. Shout, I'm free. Okay, let's get back to teaching here. What is that path? What is that process? What is that way? John chapter 8. Are you ready? John chapter 8. We're almost done. John chapter 8. And you shall know the truth, and the truth, you shall what? The truth, and the truth, and you shall... That word know means to know by experience. So you shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody goes to the Father but by me. John chapter 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 14, and the Word became flesh. Stay with me. And you shall know, stay with me, and you shall know. But I've been to church two Sundays in a row. You shall know. The truth. Colossians said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, richly, richly. You say, but what's the truth? What is truth? I remember being in high school and I took a religious class. They were like, what is truth? <laughs> the Bible says in John 17, 17, that your word is truth. The word of God is truth. Let the word of God, I'm not talking about the begets, I'm not talking about Genesis, I'm talking about getting the truth of God's word, of what is saying in your life, whatever it might be, and beginning to allow that word to dwell in you richly. We can't, are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? This is not a quick hit a button and it all, everything's different. This is developing you so that you as a child of God experience freedom, maintain freedom. This is not a game. This is not a Sunday religious thing. If that's what it is and you're trying to get out of here just to go have some fun, we love you. But if you want the freedom that belongs to you, I'm giving you the tool of the trade that brings freedom in every area of your life. The right tool makes the difference. The right tool makes the difference. You don't need somebody to trick you and manipulate you. I'm giving you the truth of the Word of God. The right tool makes a difference. Well, I just want something easy. It doesn't mean, hey, listen, if you have to change a few things to be free, is it worth it? I mean, praise God for AA classes and 10, 12, 13 steps, but you know, and they're doing the best they can with what they know. But you can get up in front of a group and say your name and you're an alcoholic, but I'm telling you, whom the Son is set free is free indeed. And if you're in Christ, there is therefore now no condemnation that you are a new creation, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. The Bible says forget those things are which are behind and press toward the things. We get so much time thinking about the past, we can't even find the direction of our future because God is not where you've been. He's where you're going. And if you learn to follow his light, his truth, for the entrance of his word, Psalms 119 brings light. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. I remember years ago when I was in college, I was, I've shared this before. I was working on 
my parents' pool. I went to throw some chlorine in the pool. And back in those days, you I mean you opened up the container, you gotta do it correctly. You know, all this chlorine's a big deal. It's like, what a throw chlorine, no big deal. When you're in college, you just think you know everything. And those of you who are in college, you do know everything. Yes. So I, I did everything right. I had it to the side. I looked away, opened it carefully. But the pressure from the heat around it created so much combustion that the moment I opened it, it released all this chlorine gas. And all I can tell you, in that moment, it just felt like a hot cloud hit me. And I just, my natural reaction is I jumped in the pool. Why would I jump in the pool? I don't know, but when everything starts burning, you don't know. And I went up into the, into the house where my mom and sister at the kitchen table talking, and, and I'm gasping for air. I'm gagging, I'm coughing, I'm gasping, I'm spitting. I'm trying anything I can to get this burning sensation out of my mouth. And I'm leaning over the sink, gasping, spitting, trying to breathe. And they ask me, are you okay? And I'm leaning over the sink, gasping for air. I don't know how to define emergency to you. And I try to communicate what happened. And so my mom called the poison control and said, hey, what do we do? What's the concerns? I mean, we're very casual about it. What's the concerns? Uh, and they said, you need, need to get him to the emergency room right now. Oh, okay. I hung up the phone. You need to go to the emergency room. And off to the emergency room, we casually stroll as I'm gagging and gasping and spitting and breathing, trying to breathe. And if you've ever been to the emergency room, God forbid, but if you've ever been to an emergency room, you can, you know what I mean, kind of remember that situation. And typically, praise God for everyone who's in the medical field. Okay? You work hard. Thank you for the four people who like people in the medical field. We're, we're not against doctors. So we get there. And you know how, like, you can walk into an emergency room? It's an emergency room. If I wanted to schedule an appointment three weeks later, I'd have called my doctor. You walk into an emergency room because the sign out said, says emergency. And you walk into an emergency room and they ask you, how can I help you? Right? I mean, you could, God forbid, have your arm in a plastic bag. I don't know how you'd point if you're holding the arm in the plastic bag, but... And they would say, what? Take these forms, please fill it out, have a seat, we'll call you. Right? Come on. Nothing against them, but that's just, it is what it is. Right? Take these forms, triplicate, fill it out, get all the information, ID. And then you fill it out and they'll say, thank you, go ahead, have a seat. Where? There's no room in that room. Okay, go to the next room. It is what it is. And we walk into the emergency room, and we come up, and they say, well, how can we help you? And my mom begins to say, tell the story, and right then, they hit this button. You know they got a button? If you can find the button when you walk in, hit it yourself. <laughs> What's that? Bing. <laughs> don't, don't do that. And if you do that and you go to jail, do not blame me. So anyway. And so they hit this button. I didn't know they had a button. I was in college. And so they hit this button, and they came. These lights went off, and they came from all different directions. And they threw me in a wheelchair and escorted me off and got me down and started putting IVs in my arm and oxygen. And they didn't even know my name. They didn't know if I had insurance. Now, when they start working on you before they know they have, you have insurance, how many people know? This might be an important thing. And what we, what we found out later, well, I'm laughing now because, as you know, the end of the story, I survived. I didn't die. If I died, I wouldn't have been here to tell the story. And so uh, what, what ended up happening, what we didn't know is that when you, God forbid, if you're ever exposed to a lot of chlorine, that it can cause your heart to stop. Yeah, now you're concerned about me. Before you're laughing, you've been laughing this whole time like it's no big deal. 
just like my family as we casually went 10 miles an hour to get to the hospital. Are you okay? <laughs> and so I think I might be ad-libbing just a little bit. But anyway, it makes the, it makes the story a lot more fun. And so... And so they, they ended up keeping me overnight. And what had happened is that I was exposed to so much chlorine molecules in my lungs when I breathed it. And I thought this is the most wildest thing, that my blood began to attach itself to the chlorine molecules and, and was rejecting the oxygen molecules in my blood. And so I had to stay overnight because they had to put an oxygen mask on me and saturate my system with oxygen. And I had to keep doing it and keep doing it. And they said basically like this way, it, it, here's the chlorine level, here's your oxygen. We have to get that oxygen level above. And the moment we get it above that chlorine level, your blood will now reject the chlorine and go back to gravitating and connecting to the oxygen. Pastor, how much do I need to read the Bible? I'm telling you, you are designed by God to go deep in the things of God. Listen to me. This doesn't mean you got to be weird. This doesn't mean you have to talk weird. And there's some people in the church world that, that look like they're being super spiritual and they talk weird. I get it. I get it. Are you listening to me? Let me help you out. I've been in the, I've been in the ministry almost 30 years full time. I've been saved for a long time. Are you listening? Those people, God love them. They're just weird. <laughs> That'll be our secret. Don't tell them I said that. They are just personality-wise, they're weird. Or they don't know any better. It, to be spiritual, if you have to talk like somebody else... And squint your eyes and sound like somebody else? Can you imagine going to Chick-fil-A? I knew I'd slide that in there somewhere. And you want to order some food, you don't squint your eyes and change your voice. Mm, I think what I need is... Right? Especially if you're a girl with a high octave voice, right? That'd be just weird. And what we try to communicate, you can be spiritual and love Jesus with all your heart and not be weird. The reason people gravitate to that is because they don't know any better. But as you get into the truth of the, the, the word of Christ, the anointed, the revealed word in your life, and you keep meditating on it, Jesus said, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. And you get that word in your, Romans 10 says, faith comes by hearing. First John chapter 5 says, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even your faith. As you get that word, and you saturate your heart and your mind the word, and you keep giving it the word, and you keep meditating on the word, and you take those times. The reason, the reason we're having Jonathan for a week like this, every night for a week, is because it's good for uh, as a church we come together and saturate our lives with God's word but even in your own personal life as you do it there's a place because at first you're like oh I didn't get much out of that keep doing it I don't feel any different keep doing it how long do I do it I don't know I can't tell you it's like someone asked I'm in a hole how many steps before I get out it all depends how deep's the hole but as, as long as I get in the word, the Bible says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. As you keep saturating with the word of God, the word of God, and the word of God, you're like, which word? If you're dealing with sickness, you get in the, by his stripes, I am healed. And you meditate on that verse, and you get that verse, and you meditate, and you keep re reminding yourself, and you keep reading it, and you keep praying it, and you keep speaking it over your life, and eventually it's going to keep growing. Faith grows, the Bible says. Faith increases. Faith can increase exceedingly. And one day when it crosses over, are you listening to me? The devil can't mess with you when you're in your prime. He said, Jesus is the Son of God. They mess with him. No, no, no. The Bible, read it again. The Bible says, and Jesus said it, the enemy touches me not. If Jesus would not have laid his life down, they could not even touch him. Because when they tried to touch him, the Bible says he went through them. They couldn't even get a hold of him. 
They were like, I can't believe this teaching. Let's throw him off the mountain. And Jesus says, sorry, not today. We walk around thinking that we have to be victims to whatever thing the devil throws at you. And I'm telling you, the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the armor of God. Stand there boldly. Be courageous. Joshua, be strong and courageous, and I'll do what only I can do. What am I doing? As I meditate on the word, I'm giving it the opportunity to strengthen me. Joshua 1, I'm allowing it, Romans 10. I'm allowing it, my faith to be built. And all of a sudden, as you saturate your spiritual person with the word. There's a point. There's a crossing point. And the devil will be messing you with you the whole time in your mind. This don't work. You're never going to feel any different. They'll never change. It'll never happen. And all of a sudden, once it crosses over, you start moving into a place of peace, a place of strength, a place of focus. And all of a sudden, because you begin to receive it. How many people know what I'm talking about? You begin to receive it on the inside before you saw it on the outside yet. All of a sudden, you know that where you are at is not where you will end. That your destiny, Proverbs 4, your path shines brighter and brighter. And the steps of the righteous are ordered. And you begin to say, wait a minute. I don't have to stay where I've been. God has something better for me. Thank God I'm free. Shout out free. Shout out free. In every area. In the name of Jesus. I call you free spiritually. I call you free physically. I call in the area of your thought life and your imagination. I command you to be free. I command in your finances, your health, and your family relationship to be free. I curse and bind every demonic activity and every plan that the enemy set against you. We stand void on it. No weapon formed against you will prosper. And every word that rises up in judgment, we condemn it for you are the righteousness of God. I set you free for whom God has set free is free indeed, never to go back. If you believe that, give me your loudest amen. Say, I'm free. God wants you to enjoy life. God wants you to be victorious in life. God wants you to be an overcomer in life. And it begins with freedom. It feels good. Just say with me, I'm free. Amen. Amen. If you'd be so gracious to bow your head and close your eyes, if you're here today and do not have a real relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm not asking you to join a church, denomination, or religion. I'm asking you this one question. Is Jesus Christ real to you today in a way that you know for yourself, in the way you process, in the way you experience that you know for yourself that he is real, and that he is your Lord and Savior? Only you can answer this. This is not fake it till you make it. This is not look like everybody else. This is a real deal. If you don't know him that way, you can. Revelation 3, Jesus said, I stand at the door and I knock. If you hear my voice and open up, give me an opportunity, I'll come in. And out of the simplistic prayer for Romans tells us, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you don't know him, this is your moment. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. Let that prayer come from your heart. Church, let's all do it together as a family. Say with me. Heavenly Father, I turn to you today. I repent of all my sins. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. That he came to this earth in the flesh, died on a cross for my sins was buried for me and on the third day rose again for me because I believe that I ask you Jesus to come into my heart wash me in your blood forgive me cleanse me give me a fresh start say Jesus I don't want a religion I want a real relationship with you So I open up the door of my heart and my life and I invite you in to be my Savior and my Lord. And I ask you for you to make yourself real to me today in a way that I know for myself that you're real and you're my Lord and Savior. I receive you today. I receive salvation today. I receive forgiveness. I receive that relationship. 
thank you for saving me. Amen. For those of you who are watching my live stream, thank you. Some of you are family that are just out of town. Some of you are watching the first time. Either way, if you've been blessed and want to be a blessing back to this ministry, we appreciate that. God bless you for that. Take a moment, text it, share. You can give on the website or download the free app. And all that information is there too. Amen.